Abasa. He frowned. With the name of Allah, the most gracious, the ever merciful. He, the prophet, frowned and turned aside. Because the blind man came to him, interrupting him unknowingly. And what could make you, O prophet, know that he might purify himself? Or that he might have paid heed to the admonition that God has revealed to you? And this admonition would have done him good as well. But as to him who considers himself self-sufficient and is indifferent to the truth, to this one you were very attentive, though you are not to blame if he does not purify himself. Whereas the blind man came to you, striving in right earnest to learn the Qur'an, and all the while he stands in awe of God. But you neglect him and pay him no regard. This should not have been so. Verily, this Qur'an is a means to rise to eminence for you all. So let him who desires pay heed to it and rise to eminence. This Qur'an is preserved in such written leaves of the book as are greatly honored, which are ranked high and are rid of all impurities, which are in the hands of scribes, noble and virtuous. Ruin sees the person, one too proud to accept the reminder, how ungrateful he is. Let him consider from what an insignificant material he has created him, from a mere sperm drop. He at first creates him, then endows him with infinite capacity to make progress, then makes his passage through all affairs of life easy for him. Then he calls him to death, and he assigns to him an interim state of a grave. And he will again raise him to life when he so wishes. It cannot be that there is no resurrection. He has not yet carried out what he commanded him to do. Therefore let such a person look at his food. How at first we pour down water in abundance, then we cleave the earth a proper cleaving so that we cause grain to grow therein, as well as grapes, vegetables, the olive, the date palm, orchards with dense trees, fruits and herbage, a goodly provision for you and your cattle. Again, you should also consider when the deafening shout shall come, the day when a person shall flee from his brother, and from his mother and his father and from his spouse and his sons. On that day, every person among them shall be concerned enough regarding his own affairs to occupy him and to make him indifferent to others. Some faces that day will be beaming, smiling and joyous. Some other faces on that day will have dust upon them, gloom covering them. Those will be the faces of the disbelievers and of the doers of evil.